We are going to turn back to our Oh Jung Hee, who's uh, still joining us in the studio for uh, a bit of a chat about where we stand right now following the summit. We've been listening to uh, Dr. Barry's remarks there. He seems uh, pretty positive about how things went in Pyongyang yesterday. Uh, he, he talked about the reduction of the military tensions. So just go into a bit more detail about what uh, President Moon and Kim uh, Jong-un have agreed to do in that regard. How are they going to reduce military tensions? Well, uh, that's right. I mean, they, they signed the summit agreement, but out of the five clauses, the first one is actually the comprehensive military agreement, which aims to lower military tensions on the Korean Peninsula, and that's to also eradicate the threat of war, any possibility of military conflict uh, at the border. So what they're going to do is to halt uh, various types of military exercises uh, uh, starting from November 1st uh, this year on ground, at sea, and in the air. So um, they're also going to set some no-fly zones for all aircraft types above, above, the, above the MDL. And when they feel that a military conflict could arise between, uh, the, between the militaries of the two Koreas, then they are going to go through some of, uh, you know, uh, steps to sort of prevent that from becoming a larger conflict. So um, they are going to adopt a five-step procedure, which really involves warning broadcast or, or warning fire or secondary warning fire, that sort. So they're going to break that procedure down into very many steps to prevent a large military conflict from happening. And what we are also seeing is that uh, they are also going to remove all the guard posts from uh, the DMZ. They're also going to demilitarize the zone, uh, joint security area. I mean, even if we've been calling that DMZ as a demilitarized zone, it's not being really demilitarized. So they are now really trying to uh, turn that zone into a real peace zone. And they are also going to work together to recover the remains of the war dead from the Korean War within that DMZ. Um, right, and then they're also going to work on the maritime border because there have been quite a lot of, you know, conflicts at the maritime zone. They're also going to work to create a maritime peace zone at the western uh, side of the Korean Peninsula. And so the western side is where there have been flashpoints between the two Koreas uh, in the past. Right, right. We right. saw the bombardment of uh, Yongpyongdo Island. Right. Also the sinking of a South Korean uh, warship there as well, and there's been various skirmishes over the years. Right. So this is a welcome development. Right. So uh, there is actually a maritime border line called the Northern Limit Line, yeah. and North Korea has actually not been recognizing that border because that really officializes that there is a border between the two Koreas. But uh, this military agreement actually, uh, though it doesn't have the official term NLL, it it sort of recognizes that, that, that there have been uh, conflicts along that maritime border, and uh, uh, it's pretty significant that the two Koreas are taking measures to prevent any sort of uh, military conflict arising on ground, at sea, and in the air. Right, we, we are still awaiting some uh, live footage out of Pyongyang. Uh, it hasn't come through yet because President Moon is attending a farewell ceremony mm -hmm. before uh, taking the short flight mm -hmm. up to Mount Bek Dusan, as you can see on the uh, uh, computer graphic we have on the bottom of the screen there. The weather is supposed to be partly cloudy. Hopefully it doesn't obscure the view uh, that much. We are going to uh, go to President Moon's speech from last night to uh, 150,000 uh, North Koreans in just a moment, but I just want to ask our Oh Jung Hee uh, one more question before we jump to that because we may have a bit of time. Mm -hmm. um, there may be a delay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to find out the reaction from the Blue House mm. uh, to yesterday's uh, summit agreement in Pyongyang. What are uh, they saying? What's their assessment? I imagine it's positive. Mm -hmm. Well, um, right after that summit agreement has been revealed, some critics have been pointing out how it really didn't uh, stipulate any sort of concrete actions uh, 
to be taken by North Korea in terms of denuclearization. But the Blue House officials who've actually, you know, who've been advising to President Moon or who've been directly involved in forming that summit agreement actually say that it was not really appropriate for South and North Korea to stipulate whatever measures really need to be done in terms of denuclearization because that's an issue to be negotiated by the United States and North Korea. So, uh, but the Tongwadae officials actually point out that uh, North Korea having hinted the possibility of dismantling its nuclear facilities in Yongbyon actually hints that North Korea has a great willingness to denuclearize and that's because uh, the Yongbyon nuclear facilities well, Chung Wade calls it as the most representative and symbolic uh, nuclear-related facilities in North Korea. So uh, basically, what Moon Jong-in, who's the special advisor in terms of security and foreign affairs to President Moon, uh, is saying is that this uh, nuclear facilities in Yongbyon has plutonium production facilities and, of course, also the highly enriched uranium uh, production facilities. So, you know, this Yongbyon facility having those sorts of facilities means that North Korea is willing to dismantling a very symbolic nuclear uh, site in its regime. And uh, uh, this advisor Moon, who's been very close to President Moon Jae-in as well in terms of dealing with foreign affairs issues, also says that there is a message from Chairman Kim that has not been included in the summit agreement. And that message is, of course, going to be delivered to President Trump when a South Korean President Moon and uh, President Trump meet uh, uh, during their summit along the on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. And so he actually uh, forecasts that there could be the fourth visit of Mike Pompeo to North Korea earlier than we expect. So despite, you know, uh, criticisms or skepticisms on this summit agreement not being detailed enough, uh, Chang Wade officials actually believe that uh, uh, what they've heard from Chairman Kim um, hints a great willingness to denuclearize and that the U.S. may also welcome uh, what North Korea thinks. Well, considering President Trump was the one who pulled the plug on Mike Pompeo's recent trip to Pyongyang, uh, but now he's coming out saying that he's delighted with what happened in Pyongyang. Now Pompeo himself is saying, um, I want to meet with North Korea's foreign minister at the UN General Assembly. There's a good chance, I think, that we could see Pompeo heading to Pyongyang and uh, hopefully he'll actually get to meet uh, with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un this time mm -hmm. uh, when he goes. I just want to briefly touch upon, because you work very closely at the Unification Ministry mm -hmm. in Seoul, you, mm -hmm. you speak to your reporter friends there who know the situation extremely well, mm -hmm. the various issues. Have you spoken to them about their opinions on, on what we saw yesterday? Do they feel upbeat or do they have some uh, misgivings about what was agreed to? Well, I have, of course, spoken to a few of my reporter fr friends uh, working at the Unification Ministry, and they've told me that, you know, this summit agreement actually stipulates a lot of detailed uh, items for the development in terms of interactions and exchanges between the two Koreas. I mean, we've looked at the summit agreement, and the part about denuclearization only takes up less than one-fifth of the uh, summit agreement, but actually the rest of it focuses on the exchanges between the two Koreas, which even... Uh, expands to cover a lot more fields than now. Like, for example, we've seen that the two Koreas will work together on health and medical care. Uh, they, are, they are bidding for co-hosting the Summer Olympics. So reporter friends, you know, my reporter friends at the Unification Ministry and I were quite surprised at how detailed and specific items uh, the summit agreement has in terms of inter-Korean relations. Yeah.